like German pistol will have to be in one hand and you have to slight, just, you know, to be just slightly in profile with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't stop, just wanted to use my two hands. It was like, no, you can't do this. <laughs> What was it about the script for you personally? Because it hits a lot of different things. There's great character piece, there's horror, there's you know the war film of it. What for you was the thing that was like you're in, that you were like, this is fascinating, I wanna do it? Um, the strengths of, um, of Chloe. I grew up with, um, with only women. I grew up with my grandma, my mom and my sister, which are very all strong women personality. So when I had the chance to so Chloe and all the different part of her personality, I took the trends of my family and to put into her. I have to say it's just the different elements, as you mentioned before, just having all of them in one movie and it being executed so flawlessly, I think it was just immediately something that I wanted to be a part of and wanted to audition, do whatever I had to do to to be able to work with these actors. So tell me a little bit about, uh, I asked, I talked to your your uh, your brigade, you know, uh, cast members, um, and you had the boot, boot camp experience. Right. What was something that you took away from the military advisor that you actually maybe put into uh, Boyce as a character, you know, that you kind of inhabited that piece of uh, suggestion or experience that helped you craft the role? I would say the biggest thing is just trying to persevere through, through uh, through obstacles, you know, I think the biggest, one of the biggest obstacles that I was dealing with while we were in boot camp was learning the weapons because at that time they only made weapons for people who are right-handed and I'm a left-handed person like in real life. So I, oh, and, and Freddie, our military advisor, like wasn't gonna teach me. He wasn't gonna get like a special made weapon at that time. And I had one of the most difficult weapons to use in the 40s was the M1 Grand. Mm -hmm. And like everyone else got to use like the Thompson and the Springfield, the sniper rifle, which all have magazines. But the M1 has a clip and you have to like pull it out a certain way, load the clip and you know, and doing it with your right hand is hard enough. But if, you, if you're not right handed, it's like impossible. Yeah. And I had to shoot the whole movie with this right handed weapon. And you know, just doing that and learning it and trying to master it was something that I was really proud of. And I think that's testament to boys like being against opposition and being able to just persevere and you know, do what you have to do to get the mission done. And Chloe is, you know, kind of resistance, you know, maybe not formally, but she's in her town taking care of her family and, and doing what she has to do. So what was your training as and what were you leaning into, the kind of organic nature of her being able to kind of work with these guys when they came to town, but then also your adeptness when you were just on your own? Um, so I, I, I did a lot of trainings to lose some weight to become quite fit because in 1914, especially Chloe didn't have any money. She was hunt she's hunting every night for dinner. And so I, I tried to lose some weight to be, and also to be strong as well. So I worked with a stunt to how to use a knife. And so when the guy was starting shooting and when they were in boot camp, I was training with them. And then I worked with the, the armory department as how holding guns in 1940, and especially how women was holding a guns. And uh, I've been very um, taken by all the film, the action film, modern contemporary film, mm -hmm. where they hold guns in a certain way. And they was telling me, no, you can't actually hold the gun like this. Like German pistol will have to be in one hand, and you have to slight, just you know, to be just slightly in profile with mm -hmm. it. And I, I couldn't stop. Just wanted to use my two hands. It was like, no, you can't do this. <laughs> and so it was, yeah, staying in the era of the film and being free of playing and being bold. Well, you guys convince me, so that's good. Um, you know, I, one of the things I really love about your characters, Boyce and Chloe, are really kind of the moral compasses of the film, that in a film like this you wouldn't expect uh, there to be that really beautiful through line of not being prepared and not being um, really wanting to be in this space. It's not who either of you are, but you have to work against nature because circumstances are putting you there. What what were you most um, pleased about either in a moment or in a scene that you got to show that because it's such a different way of, of addressing war? I think I think what was done expertly is in the writing is that there's a nice balance between mm -hmm. this moral compass that you mentioned because I mean if you think about it especially as actors they tend to teach us that whether you're playing a hero or a villain both people think they're right in their mindset so there's moments in this film where everyone is kind of pushing the envelope of is this the right thing is this what we should be doing and it's like well at the end of the day we know what we want we want to end this war so sometimes you have to step over the line and kind of do something that might not be totally you know beautiful to look at on screen but it's like you got to do what you got to do so I think it was written expertly that Chloe and Boyce especially kind of you know they have their morals and they know what's right but sometimes you just gotta push it a little bit to get 
the sweeter end result. The movie in the le next half really turns into, you, you see some amazing things that, uh, you know, are not necessarily what you'd see in war. And I was talking to Julius, your director, about him trying to give you moments where you would see things for the first time, whether it was prosthetics or um, what comes in the last acts of the movie. What was the moment for you that was the most pure in terms of you walking in and either them showing you something or having to act off of something where you were like, okay, that's all. I don't have to make that up. <laughs> I'm seeing it for the first time. Um, I had the moment where it was the mistake. Um, first of all, the laboratory was incredible. So what you see in a film, the first time I went to, the, I walked into the set, I was, I seriously get really emotional and I started to cry because it was so beautiful and I get lost into the set. How crazy is that? And then the mistake, the prosthetic that you see in a film was really like that. So. I don't really, I just has to react basically, it was incredible. The crew have been making such an incredible work and every day was just like Christmas Day going there.